Hello everyone. So we are going to discuss another question of mains and the question is what is unemployment? How is it measured in India and what are the different types of unemployment? So there are three parts of question. Uh, first part is what is unemployment? Second is how is it measured? And third part is what are different types of unemployment, different types of unemployment. Now, first thing first, unemployment means a person is willing to work, but person is not able to find the suitable work. So in simplest sense, if someone is willing to work, but if that person is not finding work, that is a situation of unemployment. So usually, usually, uh, first, let's first address the first part that is what is unemployment so usually the population can be categorized into three categories first category is those who are employed that means those who are engaged in some economic activity so those who are employed which means engaged in economic activity economic activity second part is those who are actively searching for a job that means they are willing to work but they are not able to find the work so those who are actively searching actively searching but not finding the work but not finding the work this section this population is unemployed population unemployed population third section of the population is the is that section which is neither engaged in economic activity nor it is searching for some job for example senior citizens who who are already retired or who do not want to work or say children so that section will consider that population which is neither employed neither engaged nor searching for a job nor searching for a job that means neither they are working nor they are searching for some new job or new opportunity so that is third section now if we consider a and b this part a and b this part this is our entire labor force labor force in this labor force there are two component a that component which is already working somewhere that means engaged in some economic activity here economic activity means the person is receiving some kind of financial benefits for example you are working somewhere and company is paying you salary now the problem is that housewife who are working that means who are doing some kind of work but they are not getting salary that is why they are not considered as employed similarly since they are engaged in household work in daily work therefore they do not search for another job and that is why they are not even unemployed so they will be in third category that is neither engaged why not engaged because they are not receiving any financial amount for their work nor searching for a job why they are not searching because they are already working in household activities therefore they do not have much time or much extra time so this is entire workforce or labor force if we need to calculate unemployment rate unemployment rate so that will be the population which is unemployed divided by the population which is available for work that is labor force so this is unemployed unemployed divided by labor force labor force okay this is unemployment so we have covered first part and the first part was 
that what is unemployment so unemployment is already covered now we need to cover second part that how is it measured in our country so first and foremost measurement now it must be noted that there is a ministry it is ministry of statistics and program implementation so ministry of statistics and program implementation is responsible for data collection in our country and there is nso nso stands for national statistical office so nso under mospi is responsible for data collection related to unemployment MOSPI is Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. Now, this collect the data and on the basis of that, we decide unemployment rate in our country. How that data is collected? So, it is collected using three methods or three approaches. First is usual status approach. Usual status approach. Second is weekly weekly status approach and third is a daily status approach daily status approach daily status approach now usual status means it is determined whether the person received any work during the last 365 days that means this cover the duration of 365 days so as per this status a person will be considered as unemployed if the person did not receive any work during the last duration of that entire year that means last 365 days if the person did not receive work in majority of time in last one year that person will be unemployed as per this approach so duration is important it is of last one year weekly status as the name says it will try to find out whether the person received employment in the last seven days or not third category is daily status it says it says that whether the person has received some employment in a day or not so a person will be termed as unemployed if if the person did not receive the work for even one hour in last one day so based on this data of one day seven days and 365 days the unemployment level is estimated in our country okay this is the measurement part so far we have covered what is unemployment how is it measured now we need to cover the third part that is what is what are the types of unemployment so introduction we have already covered in introduction you can just start with unemployment now types of unemployment so following are the types of unemployment types of unemployment first and foremost type is disguised unemployment disguised disguised means hidden for example in an agricultural activity five people are required but instead of five the ten members are engaged in that activity so therefore even though requirement was of five ten people were engaged so the other five are extra and they are virtually unemployed or this is disguised unemployment that means more number of people are engaged in any economic activity than actual requirement more people are engaged in any activity than the actual requirement second type of unemployment first and foremost thing is that in case of disguised unemployment more are engaged more number of people are engaged are engaged than requirement than requirement okay second type is seasonal unemployment seasonal unemployment
For example, the people will receive employment opportunities during a specific season only. For example, the people engaged in say wedding activities. So since weddings are in specific season only, therefore they will get employment during that time only. Apart from that, for example, agricultural laborers. So these workers who are engaged in agriculture sector, they do not receive employment during the entire year. Most of their work is in cultivation and harvesting duration. So that is seasonal unemployment. That means during some season they will be employed and during some season they will be unemployed. So that is seasonal. The name itself is sufficient. Third type is cyclical cyclical unemployment it means it means the unemployment is based on business cycle business cycle means that if economic growth is good if business is uh, growing at a very rapid pace in that case more and more people will be employed because the business is expanding so more employment opportunities will be generated if there is economic slowdown or recession or depression, that means the demand is going downward. In that case, more and more people will be unemployed because due to less demand, the production is reduced. So it depends on the business cycle. If the business is rapidly expanding or is it contracting? So such type of unemployment is known as cyclical unemployment. Next type is structural unemployment. Structural unemployment. Structural unemployment means there is a mismatch. Mismatch between skill required, skill required and skill available. For example, uh, you need to hire a cook. But there is uh, one person who says, I know how to uh, manage uh, or I know how to drive, but I do not know how to cook. So are you going to hire that person? Obviously, no, because you need to hire a cook. So that means the person is having a different skill and your requirement is different. Such type of unemployment is known as structural unemployment. So there is a mismatch between skill required, skill required, and skill available skill available next type of unemployment is technological unemployment technological unemployment as the name suggests it means because of change in technology, some people became unemployed. For example, if you consider old buildings, so in those buildings, there used to be a lift man who used to operate the lift. But modern buildings have new kind of elevator which are self-operated. Therefore, no lift man is required. So such type of unemployment, which is because of change in technology, is technological unemployment. So as the name suggests, it is because of change in technology change in technology another example would be of say stdpco or say cyber cafes so they used to had uh, enough employment opportunities but now those employment opportunities are over because of change in technology for example the business of stdpco is now over because of mobile phones similarly cyber cafe business is also down because of uh, smartphones and internet connectivity at home okay and next type and last type of unemployment is a frictional unemployment frictional unemployment in simplest sense this type of unemployment is there when a person is switching job from one company to another company so if a person is switching from one company then for some time period the person may be unemployed however this is kind of voluntary unemployment that means you are searching for better opportunities that is why you left previous company and now you are looking for new opportunities so that is why it is also known as a search unemployment search search unemployment so these are major types of unemployment 
so far we have covered uh, three parts of the question what is unemployment how is it measured and what are different types now coming to conclusion part conclusion part so in conclusion we can specify in conclusion we can specify that we have advantage of demographic dividend demographic dividend demographic dividend means we have young population young population which is in working age in working age working age we have this advantage but this advantage can be utilized only if there are employment opportunities without employment opportunities this young population does not make any sense so in order to utilize this advantage we need to generate employment opportunities and that can be developed or that can be done using the development of labor intensive sector so need of need of growth of labor intensive sectors labor intensive sectors for example msme sector apart from that the government need to create more employment more employment opportunities so that we can utilize our demographic dividend and we can achieve the target of 5 trillion economy 5 trillion economy in in addition to that government also need to focus on human capital formation human capital formation for example uh, government need to focus on health education and skill you can also specify that for health government has taken a uh, few steps for example ayushman bharat scheme for education government has announced right to education or sarv shiksha abhiyan similarly for skill development government has announced skill development mission skill india mission for new employment opportunities government has announced startup india startup india stand up india stand up india make in india make in india and atam nirbhar bharat abhiyan nirbhar bharat abhiyan so this is how you can conclude your question so we have already covered these three parts in the next discussion we are going to discuss a few more questions thank you and that's all for today